let's continue with smart shaders and we're going to do another smart thing if we look here wherever the water is it's kind of pebbles it's not grass and moss so can we be smart and automatically say to this texture hey when you're below a certain level be pebbles and yes we can of course we can so we've got our ground texture here we've got the forest ground here which is this part of the forest ground we are going to create a new mask but this mask is going to be based on height so we're going to want to say if you are below this height here be a different texture uh, first i guess let's load in a sort of pebbly texture so we'll go back to polyhaven go to textures and um, we'll search for, I don't know, let's see, let's see what you have. Do you have pebbles? Uh, let's just go to terrain. We'll find something that will work. Yeah, brown mud rocks. I mean, there's little bits of vegetation in here, but I think they might not show, so we might be okay with this. And remember, we can just color map it as well to whatever we want. So yeah, we'll take 2K and we'll download that. Okay, so we need to make a new principal BSDF there and control shift T, load in those brown mud rocks. We don't want a displacement, they're always automatically tasting a displacement. We're not worrying about that for this tutorial. Let's just see what it looks like. Cool, let's change the scale, bring in a value node. Pump it into the scale. And we're probably gonna go for something like that, I guess. Okay. But right now, we're gonna to wanna to make a mask for height. So, how do we do that? Let's load in that geometry node again. And this time we're gonna take position. So if we just take position straight away though, we're gonna get a lot of colors which uh, isn't really helping us in any way. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna separate this. Um, we've got separate X, Y, Z, because we're just worrying about the Z coordinate, which is height. You can see here the Z axis is going up and down. So we're gonna take a color ramp again, and we're gonna take the Z and we're going to pump that into a color ramp and we'll see what that looks like. Okay, this is it. Um, you can see though, we can't really see anything. Uh, that will be because if I move this, you can see that's where the height is. If it's basically saying if it's below zero, it's gonna be black. If it's above zero, it's gonna be white and it has a bit of a blended area in between them. That's no use for us. Well, we wanted to find where that boundary is. Uh, and we can define that just by doing a little bit of maths on this. So this is where it starts getting a, maybe a little bit complicated, but it's really not that complicated. You just try and pay attention to what's going on. So here you have an understanding, I hope, that as, as standard, if it's below zero, it's going to be black. And if it's above zero, it's going to be white uh, because we've just split this position into the z-axis only. So to add it back up to where we want, we're just going to need to add values onto it. So we can take a math node and we can change this to add and we can now change the value. So it's it's a little bit weird because uh, if you think to raise it, we have to add on a negative number to, to make this work here. Um, so if we wanted to this to just be a positive number, uh, we could just change this to subtract. Ooh. It doesn't really matter what it is, um, you could subtract or add it. I, it just makes a little bit more sense to me if it's being subtract and it's a positive value. But you can see now, I can just by uh, changing the values, I can define where this boundary is. But I also want to change the kind of blend area. So like from here to here, um, maybe I want it to be sharper or longer. I want to change the area, the, the area that goes between white and black. And to do that, I'm going to need to do a math node again. But this math node is going to be multiply. And by multiplying the value, you can see I can change the range of its effect. So I can make it much thinner like this. 
and then move it down so it's about here. And there we go, we've made a mask by height. So let's, again, to be just a mixed shader. Mixed shader, we're using this as the mask into the factor. And we'll take the BSDF out here, the BSDF here, pump that into the surface. Output. And it will take a second to compile the shaders. And there we go, but we need to switch that, that's fine. Let's just swap those around. Fantastic. So now we have kind of a blended area that we can define as well. We can actually use this um, color ramp here, or we can change these values to define where it changes textures. Okay, I'm gonna go just a little bit of an extra, an extra smart step. You know, for the most part, this will get you a lot of mileage. You can see now underneath, we've got the different texture, which is great. But what if we wanna just take it that little extra mile? Uh, I don't like this blend area here. You see how it just kind of harshly comes in? Well, not harshly, it does have a bit of a blend into the other texture. But can we break that up a little bit? Can we have a little bit of noise here so that it just doesn't blend from one shader to another? And yeah, we can, we already know how to do that. We know how to break up textures with a noise texture. So can we incorporate a noise texture into this? Can we overlay a noise texture just where the blended area is? And yes, we can. It's a little bit complicated to start getting your head around it, but it's actually pretty simple. So we're gonna do what we've done before. Take in a noise texture. Uh, have a look what it looks like. We'll just... We have to make it kind of small because we're just caring about this area here. And from this get go, I'm just going to control T, make sure we're mapping it. Okay. And maybe I'll add a bit of detail on. So how can we, how can we now combine these? What do we need to do? Um, the easiest way to do this is actually just subtracting the pixel values. Uh, we're going to use a mix RGB. So we're going to change this to subtract. Now we're going to take this ramp and subtract the noise from it. So we're taking this height gradient, turn that factor up to one. And we're going to take the noise and see what that looks like. So, um, I had this color ramp here just for viewing purposes. We actually don't want to have this color ramp. It breaks this technique. So it's just going to, instead of going into this color ramp before we go into the subtract, um, from the, the little node network here that we have to define it by height, we are going to just bump that straight into the subtract here. And now that means we've got this white area that's fully white. We've got this dark area that's fully dark. And in between at the boundary, we can define what we want this to look at. So we actually just want the full ramp here. And we can change the scale. And we can really just kind of play around with it. Uh, and you, it basically just means we're not getting a fixed blend all the way in. We're getting a, a little bit of noise and break up on it, which is excellent. Uh, so maybe we want to change the range here. So this is the range that will control the range. So maybe we'll set to one, maybe we'll move this down. Changing the scale to be a bit smaller. And I can even just maybe add a ramp after this, which means that we can pull it in or push it out, just make it a bit stronger, a bit of a harsher line. So it looks a little bit complicated. We'll just take that away, we don't need that. But all we did was we took the height position, which got us this. We've got that from height. And we've got this noise. And we're just subtracting one from the other, which then will only affect the blended area, which gives us a little bit more broken up, which is nice. This is just a little bit more natural. Don't worry about it if uh, if you think that's a little bit too complicated. You never really, well, uh, it is a key to getting things to look a bit nicer. 
So all we did was took away some noise on this rampy blended area. And now if we use this as a mask, put that into the surface. There we go. Look at that. So we can even play around with these values and you can see you can see how that affects things. You can see this, this is this is now very cool where I can change this value and we can change where the grass comes in and where it meets with the with the uh, with the rocks. So let's put the water back in, Alt H to unhide it. And let's just make this line kind of come up to wherever we want it. Maybe we want it to be harsh. We can change all these values, just play around. Get something that we want. So it's subtle, but it's just a nicer way to, to blend the textures by height together. Uh, one thing, if I'm gonna be picky now, I've got my grass texture here at the side. You can see these stretch textures here. This is because, yeah, some games, this happens in games quite a lot. This is because it's using this cube here to map the, where the texture space is. Now, um, to save that, I'm actually just going to, uh, what we could do is maybe just move these in slightly so that the they're not gonna be a harsh straight line going down. Oh, press O, take that off. So that we can move them in to not be vertical. That will save it. So I'm gonna select all these outer ledges here. And then I'm gonna press S for scale and I'm just gonna move them in a little bit. There we go. And maybe I'll move them down just so that they're not completely hard going into that. And it's just gonna save them being from being completely stretched. Just a little bit better. It's not perfect, but it's, it's, it's a little bit better. 